Okay. So Z Hansen is our uh, the player we're going to be following today. Uh, he's going to be playing the German Civilization. Uh, his opponent uh, is going to be playing the French Civilization. The map is Great Plains, standard vanilla Great Plains. Um, I'm not sure whether or not uh, this is the correct patch. If it goes uh, out of sync or whatever, uh, we can hop over to the other patch. But uh, here it is. Um, for those of you who have never watched one of these before, uh, basically what I do is I watch the player from the uh, submitter's point of view and try and point out things that I think they can do to improve their gameplay. So uh, here we go. Starting off this game, I'm going to fix the sounds slightly because I did tap out. I'll just turn down the music a little bit. Uh, and here we go. So uh, everything looks okay there. Your crates uh, shouldn't, shouldn't do that with your crates. A little bit of idle time here. Uh, ideally, you should uh, should have shot one of your bison with like all three of them, especially this one that was in, in range and then started gathering your crates. A little bit of a sloppy play. I mean, obviously, anytime you have six villager population, like all walking behind a bison to shoot it, that's not great. Middle TP, I feel like, I feel like you're probably going to still get it, even though it looked like it was a little slow. Um, it's going to be close. This is one of those things on, on this particular map that is really, really good. You are going to get it. Uh, you should already be getting to chop your wood uh, for your house. You could potentially get housed here, which I think will be problematic. Uh, you are going to get the first TP pass, which is good. Uh, it's always good. But here, here we're very quickly, like, you're going to get your TP pass. You're almost immediately going to have your settler wagon. And, and look what's going on here. You're still not... Uh, Still not going to have the wood to build the house. Um, perhaps you're just going to do like a... You're just going to shift fills, but uh, that's not very good either. I'm wait, kind of waiting for like the panic moment where you're like, oh crap, I don't have enough wood. Or maybe you're just going to do a 1310. Um, which if that's the case... Uh, which it looks like it's going to be like this. This is this is not a very good build. Uh, I'm going to start by saying, I, I like the fact that you're going for the middle TP. Certainly is good, but going with a 1310. It, I mean, look at how low your food count is here, right? I mean, you're just you're just throwing your economy to the wind at this point, and it's uh, it's really not worthwhile. I mean, you're sitting here with an idle town center for so long. Um, Especially, I mean, especially if you're going to do this, like, type of 1310 age up, the last thing you want to be doing is sending a villager out here uh, to to start herding and stuff like that. It's, it's just uh, not very efficient at all. So uh, I would definitely look uh, into just improving the starting build. That's the first thing I'm going to say because uh, you, you've been sitting here idling your town center for forever. Uh, and there's definitely no reason why you can't get this middle TP, can't fight for that, uh, can't chop the wood to be able to get um, to be able to get out uh, a 17 pop age up with a TP, no idle time, uh, everything like that, perfectly possible. So uh, this is just setting you behind massively from the start. Uh, it is an issue all in itself. So uh, that's all I will say for this to start with. Um, it's just it's not a good build and not doing good builds is going to set you behind a lot so that's the first thing worth mentioning um, I think you get that point from from watching this and um, we'll move on from it from here aging up uh, starting to chop some wood well, we'll see what you end up doing with that picking up this villager will be nice for you um, pretty decent control there pretty decent uh, kiting Market coming down, it's fine. Uh, worth noting that in, in builds like this where you have such low villager population, uh, markets aren't as effective. I mean, you're just upgrading fewer villagers. Probably would just save those resources, probably not gonna be able to make the best use of that market. Um, worth noting your hunt uh, is starting to lose a little bit of control here. You haven't done a very great job of hurting this. Uh, if you could be a little bit more proactive with hurting this, that would be good. Uh, getting it underneath your town center uh, is going to be a top priority, especially against the civ like uh, French, who's likely going to be making cavalry early. Going to want to be able to uh, have a nice, safe second hunt. 
And you've got a couple big hunks here, uh, both of which could be, you know, locked right underneath your town center at this point. See, see how weak this feels when, I mean, you got an okay age up time, but it's not even like, if someone pause here, you got aged up at 3 minutes and 56 seconds, which is pretty quick. Um, you have a TP, that's good. But realistically, you could do 17 pop age up, be up 30, 35 seconds later, um, and still be okay. I mean, uh, you'd be in the same position, except you'd have four more villager population, and you'd be aged up a little bit slower, but realistically, it's going to be worth it. Just want to point that out. That you're not actually gaining that much from this uh, particular build. 700 wood. Uh, there's merits to 700 wood. Um, I think three settler wagons is, is going to be better, but there's there are merits to it. Uh, you're stockpiling a lot of wood here. Chop wood for a reason. Uh, you, you're sending 700 wood. You have... 500 wood and you haven't spent any of it you need to find a way to spend this wood to make it worth uh, even worth just sending the 700 wood at this point like your economy is just so weak right okay there goes a TP you're gonna build a stable what else are we going to be using this wood for uh, so let's let's pause here like because this 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 is this is very problematic um, you've sent 700 wood which is fine, great card. Um, but how are how are you going to send the current wood? I mean, you chopped a lot of wood in transition. You've got three hundred in bank. You've got seven hundred here, and you just spent two hundred on this trading post. Getting the second trading post is nice. Um, but how are you going to spend a thousand wood, uh, it, especially with only you know nineteen population? Uh, how are you going to spend a thousand wood? And even if you find a way to spend that thousand wood, say you make a stable and some houses and a barracks, right? That's that's a way to spend a thousand wood, um, making a barracks a stable and six houses, right? That that is a valid way to spend one thousand wood. But then, how are you going to utilize all that infrastructure that you've made with such a weak economy? Uh, that's my biggest concern here. Um, Realistically, you're just going to probably end up gathering that 700 wood and it's probably just going to sit in stockpile or else you're going to end up making a bunch of useless structures for it. Namely, what a lot of lower PR people will end up doing, they'll just drop down a big string of houses, um, which is not really useful as well, right? I mean, you, you, you need houses, but you don't need to have a ton of houses. 700 coin coming. Okay, through settler wagons, I think that's a better option anyways. I mean, your economy, you don't have the resources to get aged up anyways at this point. You still haven't been training villagers here for a long time. It, realistically, your economy is just really, really weak at this point. Here comes the barracks. How else are you going to spend that wood? You have more houses. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, steel traps coming. At least you're making that. Um, I want to point out a couple other things here. Let's pause. <coughs> uh, worth mentioning that uh, in this particular game, if you take a look at the Fog of War, barring the uh, barring the, the, the scouting path that you've gained here from uh, these two lungs sprinting down the middle of the map, you, your Fog of War uh, has been very limited, uh, which is slightly problematic. You don't know... You, one of the biggest niceties of playing the German civilization are all these free cab. But if you don't know where you're going to try and raid, I mean, there there are tons of free villagers here. This is at least one dead CDB if you know about that dead hunt. This is this is 100% a dead CDB as well. There's lots of already preemptively dead villagers here uh, if you've appropriately scouted as resources. So try to improve your scouting a little bit. Uh, I know you spend a lot of time taking that treasure, which is good, building the TPs, which is good. But, uh, I mean, your scout's just been standing here for quite some time. You could you could be scouting out some of, some of this black area of the map at this point. Trying to apply some raining pressure, that's good. Got a villager back in queue. Notice how even though you got aged up at 3 minutes and 45 seconds, which is really, really early, you haven't actually been doing anything. I mean, you put your first military unit in queue at 6 minutes, which is no faster than if you would have just done a normal 17 pop age up. I'm going to continue to dwell on that because it's the most important thing worth mentioning. Uh, 
your economic balance here is out of whack, it's so important at your level to have uh, always have a villager in queue. Um, and not consistently having a villager in queue is, is problematic. A couple of batches of units coming out. Going to be able to pick up a nice little treasure. That's good. A lot of people will will not uh, pick up treasures, myself included. That's sort of something that once age one is over with, I pretty much forget about treasures. So that's a nice little thing there. Um, <coughs> what are you doing with these units? Uh, I don't have a lot in mind with them, it looks like, just yet. Uh, have the resources to be queuing up villagers, but they're not being in queue. Uh, getting your units a little bit caught on position here. Trying to perhaps get aged up. You have improved your, your hunt here a little bit, your hunt situation. There comes a villager in queue. Got a little bit of an army here. Should be able to save your TP. Uh, creep with the expos first. Uh, that's not as relevant as a lot of the stuff I've been saying, but. Uh, here you're going to lose a lot of HP on your Ulans for free. That's good. Keep them, keep them interested. Keep them snared as long as possible. Uh, okay. Boom. You have the resources to age. Uh, this is this is important. I, I stopped it here not because of what's going on here, but because of what's going on here back home. Uh, let's recap at where we are. Uh, you are ready to age. It's 8 minutes and 53 seconds. Uh, you've built a barracks, you've built a bunch of houses, you've gotten a couple market techs, and you have two trading posts. Uh, this exact look um, is replicable, preferably with a stable instead of a barracks, but that's uh, outside of the scope of the, the next points I'm about to make. Um, is all possible with having better market upgrades, having consistently been making villagers, and having uh, not sacrificed your early economy, you have 16 villagers. Uh, that's not population, that's total villager count. Uh, you have eight settler wagons, so I mean, realistically, you're at 24 villager population, which is still abysmally low for eight minutes into the game with Germany. Germany's, one of Germany's biggest strengths is the fact that they do get a six villager card uh, in the Third Age. They fall behind almost no one in terms of raw villager population. Uh, aside from maybe Brits in the first like eight minutes of the game, uh, which is a huge benefit to them. Uh, so I encourage you to rewatch this game yourself. Uh, watch the first eight minutes and watch all the holes where you're not training villagers. We'll go over the graph of this game at the end just so that we can see those holes ourselves. But uh, these first eight minutes, if you can improve them, uh, you're going to be setting yourself up for a much better position. Uh, I'm going to continue to watch the game. But realistically, there are so many things that you can fix in these first eight minutes that will put you in completely different situations uh, from this point out, right? So uh, we'll continue to look at the things that you can improve on, but just know that as you continue to improve your early game uh, portion, the, early, the earliest portion of your game, uh, you won't get into these situations where a lot of the things I'm about to say are going to be relevant, or the things for the rest of this game will be relevant. Still doing a good job of hitting and running these muskets, picking those off, that's kind of nice. Uh, this is another point where it would be nice if you had a little bit more knowledge of where his hunts were over here on the side. Uh, with Germany, you're always going to have free Ulan, and it's always going to be important to be uh, attempting to apply some raiding pressure. Uh, you have resources, once again, to be training villagers, but you're not. I want to continue to point that out. You also have the resources to be able to build a stable, uh, which is very important, and you're not. Your herding has actually been, oh, there's the stable. I just missed it. Gang saw is irrelevant at this point. Uh, you, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be getting it just for the point of getting it. Uh, you don't even need villagers on wood at this point. You've got plenty of population space. You have plenty of wooden queue. Okay, getting the veterancy upgrade, that's good, even though you don't truthfully have any Ulans here. 
this is a point I make about higher level play often is that uh, for this very reason having all these extra ulans for free and keeping them alive is very good for just this exact point where you can get that, that ulan basically out of your stable without actually having to really even have trained any ulans just to make them that much better. This is risky to say the least if he had like three Corsairs or two Falks creeping forward. You'd want to keep as many of these units alive. I mean they're, they are crossbows, they're not the best unit in the game, but they're still of value. Don't just hand them out to dry in the middle of the, middle of the map for no reason. Uh, it's well into 10 minutes into the game and we still haven't crossed the 20 villager point. Which is problematic, as previously mentioned. Scouting Musk for him. He's making skirms. Uh, I think you should win this fight, honestly. Let's take a look at the... <coughs> He's got 15 skirms, 4 goons. And three Corsairs. You've got six Ulans, three War Wagons, 11 Crossbows, and 11 Scrims. Uh, at even skill level, you should probably win this fight. Assuming you don't get too caught up in his building wall or anything like that. End up focusing villagers or something in the fight. Okay, taking a lot of damage for free here. One Ulan down for free. Uh, this this isn't the best angle as well. Let's let's pause here. This is maybe more of a tactical moment that we can pause and, and look at. Um, if you take a look at what he has out front of his base, right, he's got really great vision. He's got uh, buildings placed actually in a pretty good spot for someone his level. Uh, this is this is going to be a difficult area to push, uh, and I go back to like finding out like if you knew about this, this is such an, a much easier place to push. Uh, in fact, you even have vision over here, right? Yeah, you you could you could look around the map and and assume that at this point he's gathering over here. Take a look, you see dead bison. Uh, if you had scouted over here, you would know that the bison that were over here are all gone, basically. Uh, it would be, th this is a much easier angle to coming in from over here, and forcing a fight over here is much easier than trying to siege down his barracks or these houses and trying to force a fight here. So, uh, getting caught out here a little bit, losing some units for free, just taking a bad angle at his base. Oh, that's good. You misclicked. <laughs> Got the outlaw riders on your side. <laughs> I actually like this. Like, if you go in and start fighting where you've got these outlaw riders, we just saw on SmackDown how nice it is to have the uh, Mother Nature units fighting on your behalf sometimes. Sloppy unit control. Look at here. you got a bunch of skirms and stuff sieging, some stuff not in the fight. Uh... Uh oh, and this is this is just I mean, you don't you just lost all of your anti cavalry units and then here it swings in two cursors, three cursors from the back. Part of that most of this issue is just I mean, you took the bat uh, took a bad angle into his base and got caught out in a bad position. Still not training villagers. And now, after that one bad fight, now you're just in like kind of an awkward situation, right? The villagers are caught out. Even though he aggroed that treasure, now he ended up being okay for him. He picked it up. Uh, your next hunt is pretty exposed. And he's got pretty strong composition. Alright, got some more wagons coming. That's good. Be able to deal with those cursors. Kind of nice. Well, that's a, you could have gotten out of another war wagon here. Uh, kite your army back here. Don't need to fight until like the, these next batch of units come. Could have gotten out a full batch of five war wagons there. Although I don't know that it necessarily is the unit that you particularly 
Probably would have been just better off having Ulans here. Uh, getting some nice kills here. Nine Ulan. All right. You're still a chance. Still not training villagers. Uh, you have the resources to have houses build, not be popped. Be training villagers. All right, there's his two Felks. You've got your nine Ulans coming. You've got resources to spend. Make sure you spend them. Oh, should have waited for... Wait until you have everything grouped up. It's a little premature with some of those uh, Ulans. Look at... Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, this, so this is a big issue that we oftentimes see low low PR people have as well. Look at this fight. So you, you're actually in an okay spot with all of your Ulans, despite the fact that some of them got into the fight early. Uh, got a little bit out of position. The rest of your Ulans are actually coming in on a really good spot. His his skirms are pretty exposed. You can see a lot of them are meleeing. A couple of them are uh, trying to protect his flank here on these uh, war wagons that are attempting to uh, kill his falconets. But then behind that, all of your ranged units, 21 units, which are going to be adding in a majority of your DPS here, um, are just sitting in the back and not participating in the fight at all. And if we take a look at this fight, like... Just look at how quickly the Ulans are going to melt without having anything here to help, right? Got one. Okay, and then, he, like, here comes the rest of your units, but at this point, now it's too late, right? Now he's dealt with it. You need to be able to have all your units attacking at the same time. Make sure that you uh, always have as much of your force fighting together as possible. And now, at this point, like, you're screwed, right? He's got eight Corsairs, and all you've got is a handful of skirms and a couple crossbows. He's standing on top of your next taunt. There's nothing you can do. Okay. Um, so lots of things that we can improve here. Uh, uh, important things uh, that we can improve here. Um, one, I'm going to take a look at the Vill graph, and uh, I'm going to let you make the assumption uh, that you need to make. I don't even think I need to say it. Um, let's turn off this guy because he's not important. Uh, you you can figure this out for yourself, right? This this is the easiest graph in the world to look at at the end of the game and say, was I consistently making villagers? This point, this is what it should look like all of the time, right? These are the times where you consistently had villagers in queue, and this is what this nice stepwise mo motion should look like. This time unavoidable, right? I mean, you're aging. That's fine. That happens. Uh, this time, that's fine. You're aging. That happens, right? It's it's okay. It's okay to have to have not be training villagers while you're aging. What's not okay is is these very long steps of time where you're not aging and you have the resources to spend and you're not training villagers. So that's the first thing that that needs to be improved. Um, the next important thing uh, that I would suggest for you to do is just to follow more standard builds. Uh, I'm not sure that this 13 build pop age up is, uh, is ever advisable with Germans. I like the fact that you got, um, I like the fact that you got the TP, uh, but make sure you still do 17 pop age up at the very least. Uh, it's always going to be more beneficial to you to do that age up. Um, and those two things, Refining your build, just in general, and uh, making sure that you are always training villagers are going to improve you a ton. Now, I see you, you typing in chat saying that you've gotten a lot better in the past three weeks. Great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, if you want to submit another game, I, I know that I, this one took some time for me to get to. I'm going to try and get better about doing that. In fact, I may just start recording them all, uh, like just at some random time and just posting them on YouTube instead. Uh, of doing them after SmackDown, but improve your builds, improve your scouting, and improve your villager training. Uh, I guarantee you. I, I mentioned, you know, you're at, you know, it, it took you uh, what eight minutes and thirty seconds to age. That's a pretty normal semi FF time, but you can do it and have your vill pop be like way up here, right? Uh, so um, go back. Rewatch the game. Watch times where you could be making villagers. Could be scouting more with your scout. Um, 
and and try to uh, I, your unit composition is fine. Your card order was in general okay. Um, look at times where you have stockpiling resources and you're not training villagers, and try and work out how you're going to spend them. Uh, truthfully, uh, if you can improve the first eight minutes of your game, uh, the last ten minutes uh, of all of this talking isn't even going to matter because you're going to find yourself in completely different situations where. You have way more resources, you have a way stronger unit composition, and then you start to get into the first lieutenant through major problems with how do I spend those resources now that I'm making them all? How do I get the right unit compositions? How do I control my units? Macro, micro, those kinds of things. Uh, but to start with, you need to get over the hurdle of always making villagers, keep that town center uh, training at all times, uh, and just watch uh, high level replays to get your builds down a little bit better. Uh, once you've done that, Give me another, uh, <coughs> give me another game, uh, and I'll be happy to look at it. Um, but that's going to do it for today. Uh, I really do hope you all tune in tomorrow for uh, the finals uh, on ESO Communities uh, TV, uh, their their Twitch channel. I think it's going to be a really great series, Lord RFL versus H Two O, and uh, I'm certainly looking forward to it. So make sure you tune in for that. Other than that, thanks for tuning in for SmackDown, guys. As always. Um, someone asking about how they can send them, oh, I'll link you, link you the thread. Uh, just throw your replay in this thread, um, and I'll be happy to uh, happy to look them over. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, follow the channel if you haven't already, and uh, we'll catch you all tomorrow uh, for the big finals, H2O versus Lord Raphael. Uh, looking forward to it. So tune in for that, guys. Other than that, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.